Yeah. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Oh, I got to update it. We're, we're in round three. I'm Michael Hoy. I'm joined in the booth by BK, owner of Misty Mountain Games here in Madison, Wisconsin. We are at the Misty Mountain Spring Cup, and we have a match snow between... Cone. Yeah, the, the snow cone, as we're calling it. Yeah. We're, we have a matchup between uh, Sam Black and Lester Smerling. So if, two... you had, if you had hopped in a time machine, and this is a PTQ 10 years ago in the same, same store, you'd probably see these two people fighting with okay. each other. <laughs> Sam Black, Lester Smerling, been playing tournaments in Wisconsin forever. 20 years ago, you're going to see this probably. Yeah. So we do have a matchup. So Sam has played a, a parfait list, I think, every time he's been in one of these tournaments. Um, whether it's three colors or four colors, or so we call it blue parfait because it is has more of an emphasis on the blue cards. Uh, cards like gush, the foil, and counter spells, uh, absolutely, are, are, are something that he is uh, played with. I'm just gonna let them know. Yeah. Sam, this go on his own take on this kind of deck. I I, I love his build. I played it the PSS and. Thought it was great. Nobody wanted to play against it, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's due to the quality of my yeah. other two decks, but um, yeah, it's it's great, deceptively strong, a hard deck. This, I will say his version of Parfait ups the difficulty level significantly compared to the regular Parfait. Like, you got to make some really tough choices with this deck. But Sam's a great player and is seems to really know how to navigate a lot of those situations. Uh, Lester's playing uh, blue-white Stifled Knot, which is kind of a... It's it's kind of the hot new thing, you know? Everyone's on Mono Blue, and then... Uh... Well, and Lester was one of those people. Like, last tournament we had, he was on the Mono Blue Stifled Knot. That's true. Um, he, he, I know, Even at that point, he was uh, considering playing a blue-white version. He's been pretty high on that for a while. That's yeah. right, we were talking about, I remember that before the last one, I was like, maybe you should play white, so you play Battling Mage, then you yep. the, win the beer every time. <laughs> yeah, it definitely seems, like, real powerful. Um, this matchup, maybe Battling Mage isn't at its best, but uh, still is a very powerful card in, in the metagame. Sam started out with the Undiscovered Paradise Land Tax, uh, kind of the fix, <laughs> if you will. Yeah. You're going to get those three cards no matter what, but you might have to discard a few of them if you, did, if you get... Uh, Delve too greedily. Does he only get two lands there? I think I don't think he got the full thing. I think he just got two islands. Um, the turn one land tax is better in this version, in my opinion, because you have foil in your deck, so you can really set up some <laughs> obnoxious situations. <laughs> I'll, I'll that way. All right, he's gonna play a undiscovered discard. A flooded strand. So. Yeah, land tax, a frustrating card to play against, but I guess sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. So Lester is gonna name it my land. I forgot to get out my tokens to indicate what it's named. Well, it has to resolve first, and, and, it, and it's Sam not is gonna be well, foiling it. I was just, Lester could have a response there, but I guess part like days, um, it would have to be a foil of his own. Right, land tax will trigger again. Um, since Sam has sped some of his cards, he's happy to get. The full three islands. Three beautiful beta islands. So he's got six. This is Lester's list. Uh, Sam, no, Sam does have six islands on his deck. So, like we said, the blue parfait list does have a lot more uh, blue blue spells and blue lands than than most of the traditional parfaits. Sam's got three copies of Gush hanging out of his deck. Three foils, four counter spells, a lot of counter magic. I've, I've had games. I, I when I played this in the PSS against uh, Ryan Grodzinski, like I literally counted every single spell in cast <laughs> into your game one time because that's how like crazy the draw you can get. And how like like you're locking them out with counter spells, you're not locking them out with land advantage, or it's just pure. It's it's very pure. It's turning like tons of card advantage into you can't do anything anymore. I guess I know everything. So Sam does resolve a scroll rack, which in combination with Lantex is super powerful. Uh, really is the engine that this deck is looking to try to do. And uh, Lester is going to spend his, his time casting op. A little less impressive, but uh, he's going to try and assemble a Dreadnought, which it looks like he's going for right now. Uh, 
He's gonna know Vision Charm it. So Vision Charm will protect it at least for half a turn from a card like Swords of Plowshares that Sam could have off in Undiscovered Paradise. Uh, so Lester will have untapped mana during his upkeep to maybe protect it from a card like Swords. Yeah, it's a... Uh... It's really it's it's really nice when you're playing as uh, a pernipsion control deck to be able to do that. Just not have to worry about it until you have a tap mana. Now Sam is under pressure to deal with this twelve twelve, which will kill him in two turns. I think it's done. But at first we're gonna tax for three more lands. Just looking at like Sam's list of when something resolves, because he does have a lot of counter magic, the counter spells and the, the foils. Uh but he has some swords and I, I, I seal of cleansing. Say I don't humility might count, but humility definitely counts. Oh, really In the spot it's kinda of tricky because it's pretty expensive. But he does have a mox diamond which will jump up ahead of my mana. <laughs> Right, so during the upkeep, there is the source of plus shares. Lester's likely going to have something to defend this. He's going to start, I think, is it a gush? Or is that just a counter spell? I think it's a... It is gush. He picked up with a lance, so... It's a gush in response. Throw it in the two mana. And I do see a foil. I think he's... Would prefer to start with a counter spell, but I don't think he has sure an option. Two were blue yeah. In his pool. yeah, he has an opt, but I think, unfortunately for for Lester, like so now, now counter spell is off the table. This is the way mana getting in the way here for, for yeah. Lester. Like if he was on a mono blue version, he would have a third blue mana so he could opt into counter spell, but he doesn't have the option. Not optimal. Not optimal. A worse option. <laughs> Alright, so I, mean, I think he's figuring out what he wants to pitch to the. Oh, but he's still, he's still resolving that. Okay, so he'll keep that on top. It is a dreadnought. So even if he loses this fight, then I guess he has a backup. He's going to foil, discard, stifle, and island. And there. So there we see the, the blue. In a situation that I think most perfect decks would not be able to to resolve, it's very, very good that you're able to win that counter fight. Sam, Sam is right. It's odd the life total before the dread not even looks. <laughs> very happy for Lester to gain some life, but uh, Lester's going to come back out with it with a dreadnought. It's like plus twelve life. Yes, please. I mean, Sam does have this scroll rack land tax combination, so that's two two turns is like a gazillion cards in this situation. So how we drew it up, so to speak. We can't tax though; they both have two lands. So Lester did discard a stifle uh, from from the foil. Do you think maybe that's a card he might have wanted to keep the backup because if Sam is going to be using a scroll rack aggressively to find an answer, that maybe it's better than a card that he kept. It, I mean, it counters any seal for like, Yeah. That's a likely card out of these Marfei decks, usually. It's Aura of Silence and Seal of Cleansing. Sam has no Aura of Silence in his deck. He has one Seal of Cleansing, man. Okay, we're starting with the Guy's Blessing. So that's going to shuffle the deck and put back a Swords and a Counterspell and, and a Foil. One more look. Two looks next turn. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Sam could have the option of just just putting back the swords because in the, in the spot like a counter spell doesn't necessarily, I mean, doesn't deal with a resolved dreadnought, but it he could just be more forward thinking, saying like, I'm gonna want those eventually. I'm gonna need to fight. What happened? He peeled the swords and flipped it right to play. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well. He looked at it for about half a second and then like, just dropped it. And I, like flipped it out of the board. <laughs> well, Lester got the game too, so uh, that, that's a fair exchange, right? Forty-four twenty. Who's winning? Yeah. Well, 
What do you? How do you think Lester felt? <laughs> Lester uh, kind of not great. Could get a little salty in these situations. The, the one <laughs> consolation prize is that Lester, he's only got one land to play, so land tax not triggering. But other than that, I don't know if he's gonna be able to do anything in this situation. So this game might go on for a while, but this is like this is where the blue parfait deck like really kind of shines. Like you're ahead on board, and you just have the resources just to get counterspell and counterspell. You get to pick pretty much what spells that their opponent is going to resolve. You have a really really strong hold on what what your opponent does. We're gonna we're gonna call this a, an uphill battle <laughs> <laughs> for Lester. Yeah. Only two threats left in this deck. Yes, the. That metal image is a threat. Yeah, Play the blue white version. True. It's only got attacked ten times. Chris, remember, he went to overtime in a, in a previous match that we covered, and uh, he might come down and uh, try and knock Sam's life total down. But uh, so the win conditions in in some lists are are different of the parfait. How is Sam actually like winning this game? He has a single copy of a card I, I personally introduced him to. That's uh, my edition. Uh, a spontaneous generation. There's a card. Uh, at, it did some stuff in standard at one point. There were yeah. like gush decks yeah. that just won off this card a lot. I think people were saying like in the there was a short amount of time where it was like secretly the best deck in the format. And uh, I don't think very many people played it, and then the format changed really quick. Uh -huh. But there was a, uh, it was in was I mean, it in it combination worlds was it year. in combination with opposition or was it a different card? Yeah, it was an opposition static or okay. this. Yeah, um, no, it was kind of a forest for a while. It also played um, Sapperling um, Cluster Cluster, which is another card I I I I thought about for these decks. Um, since you have it, you pay a mana, discard a card to put a 1-1 one, one in the play. But any player can play that. Any player may, yeah. <laughs> back, in the, back in the day, green was about sharing. Sharing is caring. Yeah. All right, Sam has added to the land tax. He is the, the tax man today. And, uh, Though, though currently not collecting. Oh, he is collecting, yeah. Because uh, Lester's got three lands. I was looking at those Mox Diamonds, yeah. He's going full on. Well, when you can put nine basics and then just exchange those for real cards. Card Avalanche here. <laughs> well. I think Sam, I don't even think, I, w I was going to say secretly, and I don't think, I don't think it's a secret. I think he just loves these positions where he's like, He's so far ahead, and then the game gets to continue. It's just like, yeah, this oh, is you're not conceding. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and he loves it. Like, yeah, he'll he'll play this for all day. Uh, I've also seen Sam just show his hand in situations like this. Be like, do you want to keep going? You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like, uh, Lester takes a peek and he's like, yeah, I still want to play. <laughs> I don't know, but. I mean, I might, in that position, I might ask you, like, how are you going to kill me? Or, like, and if they just have, like, I'm going to answer every threat and then just not deck out because it's scroll rack or guys blessing, that could be a way. Because technically, you don't even need to tell him about a spontaneous generation. I believe he's racking for 11 here. <laughs> and, and he has about four cards in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> books on books on books. But, um, the, the, those are the keepers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I. Can't even conceive of a situation that Lester is able to win here from yeah. here. It's always a fun situation when you go to discard. Instead of choosing which card to discard, you start by choosing the seven you want to keep. Uh, that yeah. usually means that you have a lot of cards in hand. I want you, I want you, I want you. <laughs> that top card, we see as a seal of cleansing. So that's a good insurance policy against what Lester's trying to do. His second scroll rack. Interesting. But Lester has 44 likes. So. 
You're just patiently watching Sam as he sculpts a perfect hand. Yeah. I get it. I was like zoned out here. <laughs> Admiring all the <laughs> discarding humility. Discarding four cards in the clinic. Yeah, um, I, I think... <laughs> when your opponent discards four cards, you can't beat. What, what do you do? <laughs> you cast a medley match. I think he should have kept the... What do you do? Oh, I mean, you... Okay. There's a... I think I would name swords here. Yeah. Uh, nope, it's not going to resolve. It's not resolved. Medley mage, again, countered by a foil. It is resolving. It's getting foiled. Oh. Lester has a foil back. Okay. What? Sam has a foil back as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's, let's just admire Lester's face's reaction. Uh, yeah, uh, not much he can do here. And that, that will be right, enough. That'll be it. That'll be it. That'll do. He's, Lester thought that maybe this meddling mage gets there. After, even though Sam drew right, eight, my, 800 cards. My opponent tapped out. I might be all right. Yeah. <laughs> like... All right. Let's check out the, the sideboard for these players. Um, Sam has meddling mages in a sideboard, which I guess the one nice thing of the blue white version from Lester, he does have swords of postures of his own. Not a great card otherwise, so he might but be taking him out. Yeah. But like, if you're anticipating that card, because if they just name the Fire Arcs and Dreadnought, it's a lot more difficult to, to win. So Absolutely. I think if those are coming in and... And all, I think, for sure. Yep. And um, right. He has 4 and all 4 Ramming Mage, which is a nice start against the stuff. Uh, I think... I don't think he brings anything else. I think it's just so, probably those 8. Yeah. Um, Wester... He's got some... Here. Uh, um, He's like got a bunch two, of 2-0s and 1-0s. 2 Enlightened Tutor, 1-2 two Cleansing, 1 Winter Orb. Two Hydra West, two Blue West, two and all, one Tormod's Crypt, one Curse Totem, one Seal of Removal, two Source Plusher. I think I'd be bringing in a Nulls and a Seal Cleansing. I don't know if I'd be bringing in. I'd... Yeah, it's maybe a Lane Tumor, but I don't know. It doesn't seem. Yeah. <laughs> I think things get much better for Sam. Seal of Removal, too. I don't know. I like these post board games for Sam. They seem he seems to be in a much better position. Yeah. I generally have really liked the blue parfait deck against Dreadnought. It's I think it's fairly advantaged. Okay. I mean, it's always scary because I think the parfait its first few turns are its most vulnerable. And right. That's when yeah. the Dreadnought it, deck is most potent. It's but it, that it, turn three. Turn three from the like mono blue is like the scariest turn in pre modern. Because there's so much they can set up by the yep. uh, um, stacking up enough counterplay to the can be hard. Yeah, that because uh, I mean the way that game played out, that, the way it ended, it was like a landslide of control from Sam. But there was that one turn where he dies blessing, and if that swords wasn't there, oh yeah, that he, game could have been I mean, completely different. Very fortunate right there. Lester's very labored after he. To click 24 times to go down to 20. Yeah. So. That's what you get for getting all that life. Do you think dreadnoughts make very good farmers? <laughs> Excellent, apparently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Feed you for a very long time. Dreadnought pulling like six plows at once. Yeah. All right, chat. So we want to know who you're rooting for in the next game, or like who you think has the edge. What? I was talking to Lester. What do you think of just shortening the nickname of the Stifle Not deck to Snot? To Snot, blue white Snot. A Snot. I think. Snot. I think then you just need to have blue green Snot. Yeah. That would just become the most popular. Yeah. Some some green Snot. Red Snot. Snot. Red Snot. <laughs> What you lose to? Got snotted. Snot. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> 
You got the snot on. There we go. The snot comes to play. You may stick it onto another creature named Snot in play. If you do, all those creatures form a single creature. Snot's power and toughness are each equal. So it's just like a play square of the number oh, of snots okay. stuck together. Okay. Oof. Doesn't seem great, but it's a one drop, you know. Yeah. Did you play much unhinged? I did a pre-release. Now, if you um, if you have two stats stuck together, you kill one. Does it fall? Is it like an aura and it falls off? Or uh, I don't know the answer. I'm sure this was like a freaking ass question when this came out, but. Uh... If it's, I, it so sounds the, like it's one. It doesn't unit. be. It doesn't say it becomes a creature in Chapman or anything. Right? Sure. All those creatures form a single creature, so I would think one removal is all we can them all. All right. The snot would become a form of one sword splasher. Except for like the the square of the number of stats stuck together. This looks like a card that they would maybe like. Maybe. <laughs> it's like throw this. <laughs> Back to our more familiar cards. Only they would make the snots live if you kill them in the first one. It's all one creature. Versus the band. How does snot interact with the creature with band? I think it's, it's just... What if one of the snots is a creature ability? What happens? I, I don't think it would increase the snot's power. I think it just... If your snot has banding and you attach it to another snot, does the first snot get banding? No. I don't know. Is it? We're going to... The endless questions about snot. I think maybe we've, we've opened up Pandora's box. Buster's like, ooh, snot. <laughs> ooh. All right, players are about to start game number two. Lester's going to kick it off with an island, and so we'll so we'll see. Uh, Whose island is better, Chad? I like Sam's. I forgot to talk about our, our wager. Yeah. Maybe I don't want to talk about it right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we see you turn two mentally mage off island and planes. So it's all, I would... Okay, it, Lester's going to try... And... Sam? Always has the foil. Foil, discard your humility and island. Pretty good when you're going to make yourself like <laughs> Discard the foil. <laughs> nice combo, kid. Uh, you just named Dreadnought here, right? Yeah. Go to town with his meddling mage. Right on time with Lester Druid Dreadnought. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, spinning around and around and attacking yeah, his meddling mage. 360 attack. Another roundhouse kick. Spinning around house. <laughs> so, scroll rack. Oh, oh, got you got an alt. Uh, Medley mage of zone. Chris, Chris style. So, Lester can bring in sword, swords here or half swords, but like Sam's swords are just like always insane and. Lester's are just okay. Because even, like, to bring in Swords is so dicey, because if Lester plays one of his battle mages, he kind of has to name Swords of Blushers, even though he has to sort his deck, right? Yeah. And then Sam can just play his battle mage and say Swords of Blushers. Would you want to And say, would... say Dreadnought, and then it's, yeah. it's you know, indestructible battle mage. And then if you're at that point, then I think the game goes longer and advantage Sam, so... Yeah, and this is a spot where, like, if the games are developing a typical parfait list, we'd kind of be at the mercy of resolving a card like Scroll Rack. But here in Sam's list, he has a lot of permission, so he could. He has a lot more say on what that, that card would resolve. Yeah. A land tax where Sam currently has four lands, though two of them are fetches. Uh, if. Do you think that's something Lester should fight over? The land tax? Yeah. <laughs> Probably. 
I think the I always feel like the land tax is a really important part of this equation for blue parfait and any parfait deck. I mean, scroll rack is also very powerful, but there are certain situations where scroll rack just doesn't do enough. Like if you're low on cards, then it's not very powerful. I think we're. Checking sleeves or something, something might be sticking out. Western. Over there, but... <laughs> hey, Dim Navakov, I don't, it's not your place to judge our commentary. <laughs> We're just a bunch of goobers. That's all it is. Yeah. Goober. <laughs> So, uh, Uber coverage yeah. by BK Blake. Sila cleansing answers the land tax. So, so we're, we're kind of at, at parity. Just constant cards being played and killed. But I mean, I, would, I wasn't going to say Lester's does a better job of churning through his deck, but Sam does a pretty good job too. He's got cushions of his own. And Skull Racks. And yeah. So. The gush, I think, is a huge add because, like, when things are going wrong with the Parfait deck, you get, like... Ooh, less just attacking with that. Offering up the trade. Yeah. And... I think I think that's good. I think um, <laughs> Sam's... Lester's battle mages aren't as good as Sam's, so you would rather tr trade them. Alright, that's fair. Like, I mean, come on. What's the worst thing happening? The Bell Mage comes, leaves play and needs to play a Dreadnought. Alright, so Sam will play his own Seal of Clemson. <laughs> we got Jared driving and commenting, he says. Very safe, very safe. But we, <laughs> we appreciate your dedication. <laughs> There's any day you should stay at home, it's when we're doing coverage. It's got a fish, like every day. He was fishing every day. I don't know. Like, Probably a lot of them. We got a Zurin orb. Um, that's not that exciting, I guess. I don't do much here. So, Lester is playing out more lands. Uh, I guess he would have to discard otherwise. I was going to say, like, would that ever bite him in the butt because of a future land tax that might come down? But I think it's I think it's probably. Uh, but maybe. But like you're not going to be able to use the cards out of your hand if you have a million cards. If you're discarding lands, and so I think it's just easier to fight over the land tax and have developed your mana. He wanted to hard guess the gush. Sam has multiple counter spells on his hand. And he just lost it for his own. Uh, which I think is really wise. Well, I, Lester, I think it now will have to discard. I think it's so that's probably part of the incentive for Sam to let it resolve. Lester, taking a point. Not two, just one. He's going to cast another second penalty match. Is he not attacking? I think it's a pre-combat. Oh, and Sam's getting rid of it over it. Yeah, I, th I think Sam was going to cast a counter spell on this. So Lester will battle back with a counter spell of his own, and Sam is going to respond by gushing now that he got a second island. Sam casts the gush the more traditional way with the returning two islands as compared to Lester casting it for five. Both valid choices. This could be a foil on the early mage. And these foils have looked really good out of out of Sam's deck. They're pretty busted. <laughs> We've got some love in the chat. Uh, appreciate the coverage. So thanks for watching. We uh we enjoy doing this, and it's glad that people enjoy watching the content. So. Uh, thank you.
All right, so let's check out a oh, big old, old grip of cards here. <laughs> yeah. Problem is, is like uh, his options still kind of feel limited. Maybe he's some attacking thing. Maybe he's worried about dying to actual damage. Do you think he named Scrollrack with his battling mage? Nope. We checking rules. He's gonna call his mom. Want a friend? That's why I was get. I gotta buy some tickets. Small window here. <laughs> maybe he's uh going to the GoFundMe for for Mila. It's like a vision term. Oh, maybe he's maybe he's got a little money to Mila. Yeah. Maybe uh, maybe he's taking this opportunity. Good guy, Lester. Yeah. So. Chat was just mentioning how we had Aaron on stream. I think it's funny that. Aaron's come from Minnesota for, I think, every one of these tournaments that we've held. Uh-huh. And I think that was the first time we've got him. No, no, maybe we've got him a camera we've before. We've covered him before. I would, say, I would say, he probably should have more more airtime than we've given him. Yeah. Um, we got him in the booth last time, at least. We just always expect a big top eight. He yeah. lets us down. I don't know yeah. what to say. Axis. <laughs> 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 All right, so tax gets annulled. Lester's probably happy to actually spend some of his cards rather than the annuls make these sideboard games so interactive and just like so much, just like fist flying. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> like and because the difference between a one mana counter spell and a two mana counter spell is pretty huge in a lot of situations. So, kind of just turns into just being about these battling mages. Whoever gets the advantage on them. Yeah. Um, I mean, we haven't really talked about it, but like, guy is busting maybe card. Like, if you just trade out a bunch of meddling mages and then you just shuffle more get more meddling mages back in. Yeah. So, good point, chat. The clock is ticking down, and Lester might have a really hard time getting it. Two matches starting here. Well, if any yeah. deck can win very quickly, yeah, it's the Dreadnought deck. deck does a good job. Though, I mean, there is just enough interaction out of the Parfait deck. I mean, the in his, I mean, it's not like he can do anything different. Like he's got to win this game and then the next to win the match. It's not like he's up a game kind of thing. So, Lester should be just swinging with these ages. I guess Sam has the Zerg Orb now, so he can't. Yeah, like that, that's really hard to raise. <laughs> They just trade two damage. That's what happens. All right, we're gosh the hard way. Hard kiss gosh. Did he just draw another one? <laughs> he did. Lester's gushing with excitement. He's just, he's just loving this. Uh, he's got some dreadnoughts in hand. I'm guessing that's they're just stuck. It looks like he might just be discarding. I'm gonna say that. The uh, that metal image is probably not <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, not a big surprise. <laughs> but uh, Vicious Charm is the, the card that's chosen to go to the dojo. Sam, I think, has three medals in his Maybe he should be attacking with this. Metal image. Lester's yeah. yeah. just going to deck out. He's just, <laughs> just going to gush so many times he's not yeah. going to be able to find anything. The thing is, for Sam, there's no reason to it's attack. a winter orb? No. Nope. No, nope. seal cleansing. Okay. There's no reason for him to attack. He's, it's, it's on Lester to produce a threat here. Yeah. If the game keeps going and going, Sam will just keep getting more and more advantage. So seal cleansing is met with an all and then a daze is discarded in a turn. Yeah, daze not in its best right now. Yeah, there's I think inevitability is just on Sam's side. We kind of say the the Zern Orb really didn't do much, and I think actually it kind of just makes it really hard for Lester to win. Yeah. Lester doesn't have an aura, right? Has Lester hardcast 
four gushes this game. It's, it's at least three. three. It's at least three. I'm like, <laughs> and that, how many times do you think that's ever been done in a game? That someone's hard cast four, hard cast all four gushes, gushes in, a, in a game. Rare, rare. So I'm gonna go back to the standings. I think actually one of these players had a draw. Yeah, Sam. Sam is one zero oh, and one. Yeah, he drew in round one. So uh, against the guy who came in from Iowa, I was I was gaming with one of last night. He he drew with a a, a kind of cool uh, Terror Devastating Dreams deck. Okay. Um. So hopefully they. Um. Hopefully they keep doing already. That's already. Hopefully he keeps doing well. Although he has matched against uh, Will Hurst this round. Will has three match points, so he's one and one as of this round. <laughs> so the table, and not, at least not the camera stand. But things go crashing down. Sam lost my counter spells. Oh, I missed it. I was looking. At, I was looking at my piece of paper. Sorry. Yeah, we got distracted looking at the players the event. Undefeated players right now are Ricky Thorson, Michael Horn, Adam Ducow, Peter McGrain, Adrian Sullivan, Aaron Dix, and Lester Smerling. So now, folks, yeah, again, we have a hard cast foil for a meddling mage that Sam is trying to cast. I have to imagine, I, I think I would fight over this. No? No. All right. Let's let it go. Uh, Chad's asking if Caleb has played already. We did see him in round one. Uh, he lost to Will Hurst, and he nope. is currently 1-1. One, one, so. Playing white tight still. We might see him later. We'll see how see how he fares, but yeah, we've seen him one match already. Jutsi Lauren, I don't I don't know if we have a Play, Lauren in that in the building, do we? Play blue white. Yeah. I think I wasted my buddy on that alert deck. Alert <laughs> deck. Alright, it's a little more draw go action as Sam develops his mana. And, uh, I mean, the I, best part is that if Sam draws a land tax, he still gets sanctions. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, these guys' blessings are, are actually pretty good. I mean, they just make your deck a little bit more dense. So when the game goes on 15 turns, uh, you see a little bit yeah. better spells. <laughs> yeah, and like Lester fighting over a guy's blessing, which doesn't feel great. Sam is a triple guy's blessing deck, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so Lester's, I mean, Lester's hanging on the, to Dreadnought, so I guess his idea is at some point he's going to be able to try and get rid of the Bentley Mage. Yeah, it has to be, right? Um, I don't know how he does it, though. Um, Seal remover or Source of Monsters, I think, or, or Boomerang. I don't, uh, those are really the only ways, I think, to get rid of stuff. But it's not an easy situation. Will, Will tells me about these dreadnought decks is when you get in situations like this you really want to start like molding your game into decking your opponent okay um so that's why he like would board up rain freeze in these decks in this now, particular matchup it seems very difficult there's this matchup it is, rack, is and, impossible to do yeah. and, and gaia's blessings it's very difficult to mill out your opponent but he does have counter spells, so I think it's kind of wise for Lester to fight over these guys' blessings. Sure. Because he he just counters the last one. Yep. He might put Sam in a situation where he can't win, or he, he could get decked. So Chad had asked, should Lester be holding on to lands for foil and counter wars? Uh, well, one thing I think he's been playing out of all his lands is because he doesn't want to discard. But yeah, I think having one, because he, he's used so many gushes, I guess he has days, so he can always pick up, pick up an island. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if you need the islands in your hand. I think it, he just got to play them out, because otherwise he had to discard on a hand size. 
He just vision charmed Sab and triggered a guy's blessing. We do have a subscription from. He's gonna so... stifle the trigger of the guy's blessing now. So we're gonna see a counter war over. Yeah, I guess this is the fight that Lester. Though it doesn't seem like that's what his game plan has been, because the vision charms have been dismissed. So. I mean, he, he did just um, vision charm Sam. Oh, I missed that. Okay. That's how this started. He vision charmed Sam and flipped his third guy's blessing. Oh, I'll Sam is gonna gush with her spells. She's gonna hit. He can put her spell, but he does not have two blue. Um, he does still have a foil. Okay, so that discards Island and. Was it a Swords of Poshers? I think that's another I think... cipher from Sam. You mean. Or for Lester. Another foil. No. Oh. Lester stifled, played a third stifle. Oh, okay. He's been saving up stifles. He just stifled the guy's blessing. And now, um. <laughs> Sam has 19 cards left in his deck, and no way to put cards back in. Uh, he just needs to resolve a scroll rack to not die, though. That's true. But, I mean, you're not winning. That anything. meddling mage is likely on scroll rack, though, in my. In my... I think it's on Swords of All Shares, because didn't, didn't Sam just pitch a Swords to foil? Uh, maybe. I, yeah. I think it's on... I think one... I think Lester's is on Swords, and Sam's on Dreadnought. No, no, I didn't find it. Yeah, chat saying we need to clip that sequence and we need not understanding what's going on, and, but yeah, it was very interesting. <laughs> Alright. Lester is going to try and resolve another meddling mage, and so will Sam. Yeah, that was a crazy stack. It's like... Really awesome situation. Is Sam suddenly in a position where he might lose? He's counting stifles. Lester may have evolved this into... Everywhere he can win. But doesn't Lester deck right. out first? He's drawn so many extra cards. Well, I mean, Sam has land taxed a few times. I think Sam just counted four Vision Charm and four Stifles in Lester's yard. Okay. So he cannot play a Dreadnought anymore unless he had a Ripple in his deck. <laughs> I didn't think of that. He does not have a Reality Ripple. Which means he walk freely with his. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, you have to be pretty in tune. I mean, like, I don't know if maybe a little worried. Maybe, nah, maybe you could do that. Yeah. But he has to be worried about the ripple, right? A ripple. I mean, he has a seal to play. That's true. <laughs> We do have a scroll rack. He did name scroll rack with a point mage. He, he think he named sort of the post. Oh, the second oh, one. The second one. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I'll take Sam's life. I think he fetched a couple times. Let's try. You don't like Lester's position? Yeah. I well. Guess, like, Oh, Sam's getting aggressive now. So he just drew spontaneous generation. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that certainly makes it more appealing to clear off the two twos, <laughs> so your one ones can get in. Sam <laughs> or Lester took. He took four. I. He just went down to eleven. Two. Oh, he? is he fat? No, he he was at eleven. Yeah, I don't know why he's only taking two. Lester can't really kill Sam with these metal pages. He has like Zerd Orbit, twelve ways to play. Okay. Oh, were there fetch lands that we missed? Maybe there was an update from. 
five. Yeah, maybe our on screen life total is not correct. Sam gets the scroll rack. He's only putting two cards back. Yeah, one of them is swords. That has to be the one one deadly mage on that. Chat saying I would attack with the, the sword supposed to Swords to plowshares mage. I think Lester had the ones with the, uh, the swords to plowshares, and Sam was on Dreadnought. I don't know what the other ones were named, so but yeah. But the, they're cleared off. Oh, it's a. Looks like Lester kind of saw this coming. But yeah, he only had one counter spell, and the one ones that were produced by the spontaneous generation would be enough to, to finish up Lester. So, a, a well fought battle for Lester to try and win a tricky situation. Yeah. We, we talked about like the, the dreadouts don't have that many win conditions, and so like when they do get answered, it, it becomes a very different game. Um, but that also doesn't have a lot of win conditions. It's probably looking like, well, you're really good when you. Fought through the blessings. Yeah. It's like, but he did just enough to like to get back in the game and win. Super great game. Yeah. Wow, that was like that second game was so cool. So yeah, I'm going to jump over to uh, this screen. We mentioned this earlier in the stream, but for some of those who might have not been here at the beginning. Uh, we do want to plug uh, this GoFundMe for for Mila. This is the daughter of Tom Matowski, who is one of our uh, one of the content creators and really good players in the pre-modern format. Uh, his daughter is uh, having a scheduled spinal surgery for her uh, gastroparesis and chronic intestinal pseudo obstruction. So she's had suffers from those illnesses, and this is looking to help aid those. So if you have the means, we encourage you to check out the GoFundMe. I'll link it in chat. Uh, it's something that we are plugging just to kind of uh, promote. If you have the financial availability to donate, it would be very much appreciated. Uh, I just want to thank everyone for taking the time and considering Mila in our uh, in our thoughts and anything we can do to help out. Um, but now, I guess we did have this up earlier. Our uh, our fifteen dollars to spend. So I guess I I know. Let's kind of jot back where we are. So mine was a little more simple than you because I went I went real easy. I took a five dollar goblins. I took a five dollar uh, stifle knot, and then I took a four dollar blue white and a one dollar stoppy. So I kept it simple. I took the, the top decks. I thought where were where did you settle on? I I spent around a little more. I think I have uh I have stasis. I have feb. I have uh. Alluren, Greater Good, and Stoppy and Psychotog, I think. I wrote it down somewhere, but uh, I don't know where that went. I'm pretty sure that those were things. So, I might have opportunity for you and chat. Maybe uh, play around and see what you can do. We just said put it in the Discord, see, see how you do. I guess we're, we've kind of already gotten further in the stream. But um, do we kind of want to talk about like maybe what we see in the metagame? Is that too much of an advantage for chat now? Uh -huh. um, we can. Yeah. I mean, we we also asked, like... I haven't done any counts or anything. We had an estimate of what the metagame would be, uh, just from the free disturbance we've had here. So I feel like it might be fair just to kind of give an idea for other people. Yeah. Um, we have a decent number of friends. Like, Dreadnought, um, I saw... There are a couple blue-white lists. Parfait. I mean, I don't think I saw any goblins. Um, it's at least one problem. Yeah, there is an elf stack, I know. Uh, I think there might be two elf decks through. Okay. Uh, I guess we'll, we'll, uh, we'll take a little bit of notes to get a, a little bit better summary, and we'll have that for our next round. Yeah. Uh, we're going to move to a quick break. We are almost in time in this round. Uh, but we will, uh, we will be back shortly with co continued coverage of our, our snow cone spring cup uh, for, for round four. So we will be right back. Don't go anywhere.